our text for today. 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 17 and verse 18. And their word will eat as doth a canker of whom Hymenaeus and Philetus, who concerning the truth have erred, saying that the resurrection is past already and overthrow the faith of some. Now think about what Hymenaeus and Philetus taught. That the resurrection had already happened. You do know, Hymenaeus, they would say, that the dead and the elect are raised in the last day. So where are the dead people? Where are the zombie-like people risen from the dead that now must be judged? Of course, they didn't say that because they had no such teaching. I think the early church was ready for the resurrection at any time or any place. That's why they could be deceived. If the early church believed only in the resurrection of the dam and the elect, as what is taught today, then they would not have been easily fooled, since they had not seen any damn people rising from their graves. That brings me to what the early church did see about the resurrection, the eyewitness report of their day in Matthew chapter 27, verse 52 through 53. And the graves were opened, and many bodies of the saints which slept arose a resurrection, and came out of their graves after his resurrection, and went into the holy city, and appeared unto many. They saw or heard the stories of the dead rising from their graves, and not only that, but the eyewitnesses of those that have seen them when they appeared in the holy city, which is Jerusalem. That event is what I believe caused many of the early church to believe the resurrection had happened already. Since they had the blessed hope, the appearing of Christ at any time, it was being taught then that their hope was in vain due to the fact that the resurrection had occurred already and witnesses have seen those that have risen from the dead. We today have the same problem. We have hope in the deliverance, the rapture of the church from bad times or head or what we call or the wrath of God. And we're falsely being told that the resurrection will not happen for us instead of it happening already like Hymenaeus and Philetus have taught. They have a new twist. They teach of no escape that we too must suffer his wrath until the end as a great trial of testing to be punished by God until the consummation of all things. I don't know if you catch my logic, but why did the early church fall victim to such a con game that the resurrection had already passed since the consummation of all things did not happen? The dead were not living again, and there was no judgment seat of Christ to be seen, nor the catching away of angels and mentioned in Matthew 24. So I believe the early church... We're not looking for the consummation of all things or what the word consummation teaches that there is a point at which something is complete or finalized. They were looking for a resurrection of escape like we do today, the rapture of the church. And knowing that it was past, it troubled them. Titus chapter 2 verse 13. Looking for that blessed hope and glorious appearing of the great God in our Savior Jesus Christ. They figured that since Jesus came and saints were raised, then they too must have missed the boat and were left behind to suffer the wrath of the end times. Some of the early church failed to see that the first fruit rapture was just a forerunner of the blessings which is to come. That first great harvest of Pentecost will be seen in the future, and the next rapture or resurrection of the saints. The rapture of the church of Jesus Christ will not be a sheath of first fruits and Passover blessing, but a full spring harvest unto God. Are you ready for the Pentecostal harvest of Christian believers? 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verse 16 tells us of the special resurrection. For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel, with the trump of God, and the dead in Christ shall rise first. 
Then it says in verse 17, Then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air, and so shall we ever be with the Lord. In verse 18 it says, Wherefore, comfort one another with these words. It's great comfort to know that we can expect Jesus to come at any time. And there is an escape plan for the church of God before things get out of hand during the days of tribulation. Well, this is Larry Zorro. Take care. Bye.